In this video, I wanna go over the five mistakes that I see students make when they're trying to find the X and the Y intercepts of rational functions. I've been a teacher for over 14 years, and I can tell you, no matter how well I thought I taught a lesson, students year after year would continue making the same mistakes. Even after I would go through my lecture and saying, hey, here is the mistake students make, they would still do it. So that is why I wanted to make this video so you can see the mistakes on the, on the types of rational functions I'm going to give you so you don't make those same mistakes on a test or a quiz or an exam. So let's go through these five mistakes. The first one is to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you simplify, right? I love teaching students the tricks to finding the X and the Y intercepts. One thing we always remember, right, to find the X intercept for any function, set Y is equal to zero to find the y-intercept for any function, set x equal to zero. Now that is the exact same truth for rational functions. But once we kind of work through multiple examples, we realize there is some tricks, right? And this is what students like to you know, fall back on, or at least they remember, or they put them down their notes when they take a test because time is of the essence. So for a rational function, when you're trying to find the x-intercept, all you simply need to do is set your numerator equal to zero to solve. And if you want to find the uh, y-intercept, then simply just take your constant over your constant. Those are easy to remember and they help you do, um, they help you find the X and the Y intercepts rather quickly. However, they fail to explain times when we, when we don't have an X and Y intercept. So let me kind of show you because there's multiple times that we're not gonna have an X, Y intercept. And in this example, if you fail to simplify, then what you're gonna get is you're going to get an X intercept that is actually not an X intercept. Why is you being, oh, I was holding it down. Sorry about that. All right, let's just get rid of that. <laughs> so in this example, I have an x plus 2 divided by x squared plus a 5x plus 6. Okay, so a lot of times students will say, oh yeah, I remember if I want to find um, the x-intercept, just set my numerator equal to 0, and therefore x is equal to a negative 2. And then to find the y-intercept, I can just take constant over constant, right? Okay, so where is the mistake? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have to make sure we simplify first. Why do we want to go ahead and simplify? The reason we want to be able to go ahead and simplify is because we have to be able to look out for holes. Remember, holes are what we call removable discontinuities. Those are values that make our denominator equal to zero. When we have a rational function, we know our denominator cannot equal to zero, right? So what we want to do when we're looking for discontinuities, either vertical asymptotes or holes, is we set the denominator. So I'm just going to say our discontinuities our discontinuities um, are going to be when you take your denominator plus six and you set it equal to zero. Now, thankfully this one is going to be factorable. So that's going to be an X plus three times an X plus two is equal to zero. So I have zero product property, X plus three equals zero and X plus two is equal to zero. So therefore X equals negative three and X equals negative two are values that are not defined for the function. Now remember, the difference between them is if they can be divided out, they're called a whole. If they cannot be divided out, they're called a vertical asymptote. Regardless, you cannot have an intercept on a discontinuity. Discontinuities are values that are not defined in the function because if I plug in negative three into this function, it's gonna make my uh, denominator equal to zero. If I plug in negative two, it's gonna make my denominator equal to zero. So the first thing we want to do in this example is simplify factor, 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 everybody's favorite operation. Right, And what I want you to see is when I go ahead and factor this, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? I recognize that now I have these two binomials separated by a product. I can now apply the division property. So I apologize, I'm kind of, well, let's, I have enough room. So now actually I'm left with one over a X plus three. Make sure that's still on my line. Yes, it's good, okay? That is actually going to be my simplified function where I have a whole at X equals negative two. So my X intercept, it does not occur at negative two. That is actually a whole a undefined value of my function. Now my y-intercept is still gonna hold true because again, if you plug zero in for x, you're gonna go to one third, so we're still good to go here. But make sure, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 always check for factoring because we want to be able to identify our discontinuities because again, x as well as y-intercepts cannot occur at a discontinuity. Now, number two, kind of goes into it, is when students are working through something and they get imaginary numbers and they say, oh, well, that one kind of works all right. And, but ladies and gentlemen, imaginary are exactly that, or complex. They are imaginary. They are not real values. So when we're looking at a graph, when we're graphing something on an X, Y axis or an X, F of X axis, we're dealing with real values. So if we get imaginary solutions, we have no real X intercepts, right? A lot of times we just say X intercepts, Y intercepts, but what we're talking about is real X intercepts and Y intercepts, something we can actually graph 
on a XY plane. Okay, so in this example, when I go ahead and set um, to find my x intercepts, I'm going to put zero in for uh, my f of x. I'm going to get a x plus two quantity squared plus two. All right. Now, in this example, when you go ahead and solve this, we can just use the square root method, right? So I subtract a two, subtract a two, I get negative two equals an x plus two quantity squared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now you see when I go ahead and take the square root of both sides, I can't take the square root of the negative number in my real number solution. So this has no x intercept. Okay, now this is a one example, but also you could have something when it's like an x squared plus seven, that's going to produce uh, no, that's going to produce imaginary solutions. Or you could also have like a quadratic, right, where the only way you could test it would be using the quadratic formula or using the discriminant. But there's another problem with this one, which again goes back to what I was talking about with simplifying, right? So I can actually like double up on simplifying. Ladies and gentlemen, to find the y-intercept, we know x has to equal zero, right? So a lot of times what students will do is they say, oh, I'm just gonna take my constant over constant because it's so easy to remember. So let's simply say that's going to be y equals a two over one, which is just going to be two. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to actually, no, this one, yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. Remember, the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You could expand this out, which again, just because I'm a math teacher, I guess I'll do it. So this, if you expand the x plus one quantity squared, that's going to be an x squared plus two x plus one plus two, right? Because that's the expanded form, all over an x plus one. Now, you can see this is actually going to be an x squared plus two x plus three over x plus one. Right? So make sure you simplify. If you have parentheses, get rid of those parentheses by expanding it out because the y-intercept in this case is not going to be y equals two, right? So that is incorrect. The y-intercept is simply going to be a three or when y is equal to three. Another way you can think about that is again, if you just remember the fundamental rule, the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. Let me actually do a zero, uh, a red one here so I don't confuse that. So that is wrong. If you just plug zero in for x, you don't need to expand this out. Zero plus one is one, one squared is two, one, uh, sorry, one squared is one, one plus two is three, and then, then you have uh, zero plus one is one, so three over one, and you get y is equal to three, okay? So you can always fall back. I love the rules to remember how to find the x and y intercepts fast, but don't forget um, about that kind of stuff. And, and again, if you want to, you know, go through the understanding of how to find the x and y intercepts fast, or at least my method, then go ahead and check out uh, another video I have for you. Uh, I'll put it down below and how to do everything fast. The next one is going to be just simply going too fast. Now you might say, Ms. McLogan, I know we all need to slow down, right? But there's something important um, that comes into when we're finding the x and the y intercepts. Okay, so if I have an x squared plus a three x, Again, this is another example where students will make the mistakes. I don't know what it is. They just see the number five and they say, set the numerator equal to zero. So there's like X intercept, set the numerator equal to zero. Well, I don't know. Let's just plug it in as a five. <laughs> Let's just say X equals five. No, ladies and gentlemen, set. Remember what we're doing is set the numerator equal to zero. So what we have here is zero is equal to five. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a incorrect statement, right? So when you have an incorrect statement, no x-intercept is going to exist. So no x-intercept. Now, another one that comes over here is to say, well, if they remember the y-intercept is going to be constant over constant. So they say, all right, I have a five, but there's nothing down here to put it over. So a couple mistakes um, that we could do is sometimes students will see, well, let's just make that then y equals five because there's nothing over here to do. No, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> again, that is incorrect. We cannot, uh, we have to understand like what is going to be the constant over here? This constant is zero, right? Because you, if you had x squared plus three x, that's the same thing as x squared plus three x plus zero. So now when I take constant over constant, I have a five over a zero. I was gonna say sometimes students will put a zero, sometimes they will, um, but that is incorrect as well. So don't just do y equals zero. It's constant over constant. And you can see, if I put y equals five over zero, we can't divide by zero, ladies and gentlemen. So this is an example of no y-intercept, right? It happens all the time with on that. I had one more, oh yeah, this. All right, we still have two more tips, but ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying this video, um, then make sure you let me know down in the comments down below. I love hearing the comments from you guys, letting you know if there's any other mistakes or tips that you see with finding the x and y-intercepts, 
um, put it down in the comments down below. I really appreciate hearing uh, your guys' thoughts. The next one is, again, a very, very common mistake that students will make. And again, this comes into part of that simplifying process. I wanted to write down the numbers that I had for x plus 2, x minus 1, x plus 3. So x minus 2 divided by x, let's do plus 1, and let's do plus 3. Say that? Yeah, okay. So, and this one. Again, students rely on what we need to do to find the x and the y intercepts quickly, right? We just do things too fast. So in this case, what students, they make mistakes in if they want to be able to find the x-intercept, not the y-intercept, the x-intercept, they're like, oh yeah, set the numerator equal to zero. What's the numerator? That's going to be an x minus two. So x is equal to two. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're working too fast, okay? This does not work. It only works, that rule to finding the x-intercept only works when you have a rational function. That means a numerator and a denominator. That's it. In this case, you can see I have a numerator, denominator, and this constant. So the three is messing everything up. So what you could do is you could get like denominators, combine them, and then do it. Or what you can simply do is say, well, let's revert back to what we know. We know the x-intercept is when y is equal to zero. So let's just skip over all that and set y, f of x, or y, equal to zero, and let's go ahead and solve for x. So x minus two divided by an x plus one plus a three. So now I can subtract a three on both sides. I get negative three, come on. Negative three is equal to a x minus two divided by x plus one. Now I need to get that off the denominator. So I'm going to simply multiply by an x plus one on both sides, multiply an x plus one, Notice this is kind of rewritten weird, so I'm going to rewrite this as a negative 3 times x plus 1 is equal to an x minus 2. Apply your distributive property. Negative 3x minus 3 equals x minus 2. Get the x's to the same side. Get the numbers over to the same side. So I get a negative 4x is equal to a negative positive 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. In this case, we get x equals a negative one-fourth, right? So simply just always go revert back to that. Don't just simply follow the rules because that's what you can simply remember. You have to remember the fundamentals of finding the x-intercept. It's when y or f of x is equal to zero. Yes, we love setting the numerator equal to zero, but that's only when you have a rational function. This is, a, this is in not that format. This three messes everything up. So what about the y-intercept? You know, what mistakes will students make here? Well, again, they'll give me the same typical stuff. They'll give me, you know, y equals a negative two over one, which is a negative two, or they'll give me a y is equal to three because they just see those numbers and it's quick and easy, right? But again, y intercept is when x is equal to zero. I've said this so many times in this video. I'm hoping by the end of this video, you have that like memorized. Y intercept is when x is equal to zero. So let's just do it, right? Let's plug in zero and for x, zero minus two divided by zero plus one, plus three, negative two, um, negative two over one. So therefore that's gonna be negative two plus three. My y-intercept is when y is equal to a positive one, okay? So the um, so it's great to be able to have those rules, ladies and gentlemen, but I don't want you to, you know, be, be um, stuck on always having to remember those rules. Remember the fundamentals. All right, and the last one. The last one is one of my favorites. And this one I like to call embracing the suck, okay? Now this is especially um, dedicated to my pre-calculus students. We get them sometimes in Algebra 2, but I feel like a lot of times in Algebra 2, we're not challenged, you know, it's enough. Um, and so once we get into pre-calculus, we get a problem that has a little bit of deviation from what our teacher had taught us. And then we just wanna like give up. Okay, and so this is one of those common mistakes that I'd see, especially earlier in the year in pre-calculus. And then once we go through this little bit of coachability, students can get more comfortable. Now, remember I talked to you about, you know, simplifying things. And a lot of times students will look at this and they'll say, all right, you know, I got to go ahead and, um, you know, factor, factor these two to kind of see if there's any holes or anything like that. But then they look at this numerator and they say, what two numbers multiply, give me three, add, give me three. Ah, crap, that's not factorable. Oh crap, if it's not factorable, then I just don't know what to do with it. And they'll just like stop or give up or make up an answer. Or they'll say no x-intercept, right? So if I say, what's the x-intercept? They say, uh, I don't know, that's non-factorable, right? So x squared plus 3x 
plus three equals zero. That's non-factorable, must be complex solutions, so no x-intercept. Well, ladies and gentlemen, remember for a quadratic, we could have you know two real real, we could have um, no solution, right, that example, or we could also have two irrational, right? We could have real, but they could just be irrational and not rational numbers. So what are we gonna do? We gotta do the quadratic formula. Now, a lot of times students don't wanna do the quadratic formula because one, maybe they forgot it, or two, they just don't wanna do that extra work, right? They're doing their homework or they're taking the test, they're like, man, did I do something wrong? And no, just because you're having to do the quadratic formula doesn't necessarily mean that you did something wrong. But if your teacher hasn't gone through directly a problem like this, you might feel that way. And so I totally understand that. And I would try to always do as many problems as I possibly could for my students. But ladies and gentlemen, it's just not possible for me to be able to go over every single type of problem or every single time that you could possibly use the quadratic formula, okay? So just make sure that you, yeah, you set your numerator equal to zero. If it's not solved by factor, factoring, that doesn't mean there's no x-intercept. Use the quadratic formula. Now, obviously, if there's irrational or imaginary solutions, there's no x-intercept. But in this case, we're going to have two real rational solutions. So I just need to figure out what those are. So 3 squared is going to be 9. Oh, that's supposed to be a negative 3. I wanted that to be a negative 3. Well, oh, yeah, I wanted that to be a negative 3. I messed that up. I don't want them to be irrational. I want them to be rational or real. I want them to be irrational real. So that's supposed to be a negative 3. Apologies for that. I don't want them to be uh, complex. So let's make that a negative 3. So that's going to be a negative 3. So therefore, that's going to be a positive 12 divided by 2. So in this case, uh, 0 is equal to a negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 21 divided by 2. Those are my x-intercepts, right? So x equals a negative 3 plus a square root of 21 divided by 2. And x equals a negative 3 minus a square root of 21 divided by 2. It doesn't look really pretty, right? But you can write those as coordinate points. Those are x-intercepts. Those are just as equal to our integer solutions, okay? So don't disparage our uh, irrational friends. And then again, on the y-intercept, ladies and gentlemen, like, you know, don't let something be non-factorable mess you up, right? The y-intercept is when x is equal to zero or constant over constant. So therefore, that's simply just going to be a zero comma a negative three half. So that's going to be a negative three divided by a two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are my top five mistakes. If you want some more practice on being able to identify the X and the Y intercepts and overcoming these mistakes, then check out the uh, downloadable worksheet I have for you down below. If you wanna see more mistakes that I see students make in the classroom as my time and a teacher, or you just want more examples or videos on rational functions, then check out the next video I have for you here or all the playlists that I have for you down below. Cheers.